Notice in the upper left hand corner we renamed the cell F4 as price and now we're going to do the same thing with the number of cars sold. We also renamed cell F5 and we typed in the upper left hand corner the word cars. Now we're going to begin working on writing in the formula in the appropriate spots. As you'll notice in cell G10 there's already a number that cell was reserved for the value calculating on that branch. We're going to select that cell. We're ready to input the formula to calculate the net revenue. We're going to take, the, we're going to consider the take rate in cell G5. That's 50 percent. Multiply it by the number of cars that's stored in F5, but we've labeled it cars. Then we're going to multiply that number by the difference between the price, which is stored in F4, but labeled price minus the variable cost for the high investment which is minus 14 which is 14 which is stored in cell C5. In cell G10 we've been writing the formula we've set it equal to G5 times the cell named cars times when we open the parentheses price we've typed in the minus sign and we're now about to select a cell with $14 and close the parentheses. When we do that, this is what appears. Notice in cell G10 there's a 23, that's the net revenue. And now we're going to work on the cell G14, which is what happens if the take rate is only 30%. We repeat the entire process for cell G14 that we did for G10. Now it's important to remember that certain cells in the tree are reserved and you cannot play around with them. Values have to be in that box and the probabilities have to be in the box above each branch. So we've input the G14 formula and the net revenue is $13.8. In this case it's millions of dollars. Now the default assumption and how the end values in column H are, are determined is it simply adds up the values along the branches. So if we have a high investment decision and a 50% take rate minus 13 plus 23 produces a value of 10 in the cell H10. Similarly, if we have a high investment, only a 30% take rate, minus 13 plus 13.80 is 0.8 million dollars and that's stored in cell H14. We're going to repeat that process now for the lower half of the tree. Notice also it calculates an expected value by rolling back the tree. The expected value is 0.6 times 10 plus 0.4 times 0.8 and the value is 6.32. That cell which contains a 6.32 is G12 and that too is a protected cell. In cell G20 we're going to put in a formula associated with a decision of low investment but a take rate of 50 percent. So we're going to select G5, that's the take rate. We're going to multiply it by the number of cars in column F, row 5. We're going to multiply that by the price minus the variable in cost, which is $27. And it'll calculate what that revenue is. The net revenue in cell G20 is $16.50 million and now we're going to work on cell G24 in exactly the same fashion. We're going to take the 30% take rate, multiply it by cars, which is 1 million, multiply that by the difference between 60 and $27 to determine the net revenue for a low investment and a 30% take rate. Cell G24 now has a net revenue for a low investment and a 30% take rate. That's $9.9 .9 million. Notice again column H. For the upper half, the 50% take rate, the revenue, net revenue minus the $8 million investment produces a total profit of $8.5 million. If the take rate is only 30%, then there's $9.9 .9 million in net revenue minus the $8 million in investment. And the net, the total profit is $1.9 million. Now to determine the expected value, we multiply 8.5 times 60% plus 
1.9 times 40%, and the value we obtain, the expected value is 5.86. Of the two expected values, since we're trying to maximize, 6.32 is greater than 5.86, and thus in cell F18, we see 6.32. Once the tree has solved the problem and specified that the upper half of the tree is the optimum path, the word true appears in cell F11, and the row false, word false appears in the cell F21. Because the high investment is the optimum decision, in column H, in row 9, it specifies that has a probability of 60%, and column H, row 13, it has a probability of 40%. However, in the bottom half of the tree, it puts 0% in both cases because you're not going to go down that path. Now, those 0% were not used in calculating the expected value. What was used in calculating the expected value were the probabilities on the individual branches. By clicking on the box, boss controls to show you one other piece of information on the menu that appears. When the menu for boss controls appears, I wanted to select the calculation tab to show you the options. The default assumption for the method of calculation is cumulative payoff. That means it takes every value on every branch along each path and sums those values. In our case, it was adding a minus investment cost to the net revenue. In addition, notice the optimum path in this case is maximum payoff. When we set up the spreadsheet, we made a point of emphasizing that we input a probability and then the second cell had one minus that probability, the complement, so they add up to one. However, with this version of Precision Tree, if you'll notice, towards the bottom there's a section called Chance Probabilities and one can have an option that says must total to 100%. In that case, it will always know that those two probabilities of the high 50% take rate and the probability of 30% take rate must always add up to one. So it wouldn't be a problem if you didn't write one and if you didn't write the value and the other one being one minus it. If you were to click on the drop box, you'd notice that you have two alternatives, maximum payoff and minimum payoff. Since we're maximizing profit, we select the maximum payoff. Let's review what the tree contains. We constructed a tree starting with a decision, two branches named high and low that we had to rename. On the branches, we put values that correspond to the investment cost, minus 13 for high investment, minus 8 for low investment. We then constructed the probability, the chance node, with two branches, 50% take rate and 30% take rate. We referred to the cell which had the 60% probability, and we referred to the cell that had to complement the 40% probability. And then we had to input a formula that was the most complicated task. So we had to put a formula to calculate the net revenue. We had to do it for each of the branches. Recall that in this example, we use the default assumption called cumulative payoff. And that's how the end values were calculated. Topmost part of the tree was $23 million in net revenue, minus $13 million investment. The total profit is $10 million. And the second branch, it's $13.8 million net revenue, minus $13 million in investment, for a total profit of $0.8 million. As you input all your values, the tree is automatically calculating, updating its expected value. At the end, this is what the expected value would look like. For the high investment, the $6.32 million is determined by taking the 10 and multiplying by 0.6, plus the $0.8 million times the 0.4. And since it's the optimal path, it records in blue the probabilities of those two paths. In the non-optimal path, the expected value is calculated the same way. It's 8.5 million times 0.6, plus 1.9 million times 0.4. And the total net profit, the expected net profit is 5.86 million but that is lower than the high investment. And as a result, since it's the non-optimal path, the probabilities that it associates with them at the end of the tree are zero and zero, but those values are not used to calculate the expected value. And then the model chooses the maximum of 6.32 and 5.86, and the value is $6.32 million.